Thank you, Mark. Good evening, everybody. I know you're not here for me, so I'm gonna, I'll keep this very, very short. Uh, my name is Alessandro, I'm a professor, and as such, I, I do travel a lot, and I go many times. Have you ever been to China? Who's been to China? Quite many. Do you know what it is like when you share my app? What's the hardest thing for you when you go to China? <laughs> language. Who is quite great in my experience? The language is, uh, is tricky. What's the second hardest thing? Currency. For me, the second hardest thing up to the language was pay, spending money. It's really tough because they don't take most of the Western credit cards. There are very few ATMs, and even if you get cash, they don't want cash. Most of the payments are done through mobile apps. And these mobile apps, for pay. So you go to a food stall in a, in a, in a market square, and you pay with your mobile digital cash. That's the reach of digital technologies, even uh, you know, in, the, in the most the simplest sectors of the economy. Now the interesting thing there is that it doesn't only work as a small service that makes payment easier and faster and easier to track, because each transaction is then obviously gathered and collected and analyzed. And suddenly you have a lot of information about the transactions that people do. And when you have all of this information, the type of products and services and your understanding of your company and your customers changes completely. So I think I dug a little deeper when I found two stories, two little anecdotes of what Ant Financial, which is one of these big providers of payment services, two of the things that they managed to do. One of them I found completely shocking is they're able to issue a small business loan. How can they do that? They know exactly how much each customer is credit worthy. They also know who buys from them. So they know if their clients are credit worthy, so they will keep paying. They also know whether the product they sell is competitively priced so they can predict the business volume of the clients without having to meet them in person. That changes all, all together the way you manage your business. The second thing I found, which I, I found really, really fascinating and very surprising, is they recently launched a new insurance product. It's a smartphone screen policy targeted exclusively at ladies who wear skinny jeans. Why, why is that? Because they know from data that ladies who purchase certain items, which are skinny jeans, and then wear them and they see them on photos on social media and so on, these ladies also spend more money than the average consumer on repairing the screen on the phones. So the combination of these different data points creates business opportunities that a human being alone would be absolutely unable to, to envision. Now, all this to brag about the fact that I travel a lot, course. <laughs> also to write about the fact that I know a lot. And I, I, I also have a book coming out soon, so I consider myself an expert. And yet, I am here today, not so much for this little introduction, but because Professor Lacani is one of the biggest inspirations in my research. He's done amazing, like genuinely amazing work on open innovation, the use of the crowd, blockchain, platform businesses, and of course, the book of today will be about network businesses and the use of AI-driven uh, uh, technologies that don't only, as we said, allow you to run your operations in a slightly different way. They completely redefine what does it mean to lead a business and to design your strategy. So I'm actually going to stop because I really want to listen to you. Thank you.